Hey, Doug Walker here, uh, talking about something I don't normally talk about. Uh, you know I talk about a lot of Disney stuff on here. Uh, I love Disney, even though I know it's a big, evil corporation. I love it. Uh, I love the childhood memories it brings out. I love the innocence of it, uh, and all, all that schmaltzy stuff. So, um... Uh, I want to talk about this short that came out before the movie Coco. It was a Frozen short. I use the word short very loosely because it's like 21 minutes, I think. And it's kind of like pissed off a lot of people, uh, which is interesting. Frozen already has gotten kind of this backlash because it's everywhere. People are sick of Let It Go and the merchandise everywhere and stuff, which is very understandable. Uh, even when the short started, I was saying, you know, I like the movie, but I'm getting really sick of Frozen. <laughs> um... And, uh, it's gotten this huge backlash of, uh, people sort of saying, like, you know, we were here to see Coco! We didn't want to see a preview for Frozen 2, you know, that's even what I called it. Uh, we didn't want to see another reason to go and buy Elsa and Anna dolls and, you know, hang little Olaf, uh, ornaments on the tree and stuff. As soon as I went to the store, uh, afterwards, I saw little Olaf ornaments, I saw Elsa and Anna in the new outfits and stuff, and I'm like, this is why that short was made! <laughs> uh, so, it's gotten this big backlash, partially because it is so long, and kids were getting ANC, and they're like, when, when's Coco gonna start? When's this gonna, gonna begin? Uh, and I kinda wanted to look at whether or not it's deserving of the hate. Uh, cause I, I, I'm kind of on the side, I, I'm kind of in the middle, leaning towards, I don't know if it is. Um, Here's the big thing, you know, Frozen is still friggin' huge. I mean, it's just like, how many years did that movie come out and it's still a monster? It's still selling tons of merchandise and they're just, they can't get out the merchandise enough. Uh, you know, it's probably gonna be like, you know, the new Lion King, if it's not already. I mean, it's just been relevant for so many years. Uh, so, it's one of those things where it's like, you just know they were wishing, God damn it, why didn't we put this before The Good Dinosaur? <laughs> or something like that, because Coco is a good movie. It's a really, really good movie. It's getting great reviews, and people are flooding to go see it because it's so wonderful. Uh, so this did not need a Frozen short. Uh, this honestly would have been fine if you put, like, the short lava before it, which is like, well, what, seven minutes? Something like that. And Disney and Pixar are some of the few studios that are still putting out shorts before their films, uh, which is very rare. They, they used to do it a lot. They used to show cartoons before films. They used to show... I was gonna say they used to show commercials, but they are doing that now, aren't they? Uh, but, you know, they used to do newsreels, and, you know, going to the movies was kind of like an all-day thing. It was like going to an amusement park. Um, but yeah, since then, they've gotten less and less, and they've trimmed it down. Uh, but people have really congratulated them on bringing shorts back, uh, at least in Disney and Pixar. You know, they, they haven't given up on that. They still put shorts before them, and, uh, you know, they get usually get nominated for Best Animated Short, and half the time win, uh, and and they're usually very well put together and very creative and test new different types of animation. There's good storytelling, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this clearly, you could tell what's kind of made just to sell dolls and uh, toys and, and stuff like that. Um, but I, I will say this, that when it was done, when the whole short was done without giving anything away... Uh, I wasn't super annoyed by it. I went in ready to be annoyed by it. And by the time it was done, it had very nice scenery, it had very nice songs, very cute songs, uh, it had dramatic moments, it had funny moments, it was, you know, visually beautiful, and it had a nice message at the end. So by the time it was done, I went, okay, I'm good. we're still cool, Frozen, we're cool. But usually after a short, uh, you know, after, uh, Lava, and after the old guy playing the chess game, and, you know, all these famous shorts from, uh, Pixar, after they air, uh, or after they're shown to the audience, there's an applause, or there's a nice laugh, or people, yeah, yeah, that was nice to do. That was not at this short. People were just like, okay, <laughs> you know, like, can we start the movie now? Um, and I think a big part of that is because it was so long. It was 21 minutes. And one of the reasons that it didn't quite annoy me as much is because I grew up with a movie called Rescuers Down Under. And now a lot of you may have seen this movie. Uh, most of you didn't <laughs> because the film did not do very good at the box office. But if you did see it, 
in the theater, they had a short there with Mickey Mouse called The Prince and the Pauper. And this isn't like a little five, six minute Mickey Mouse short. This was again like half hour, maybe 45 minutes. <laughs> I gotta look at it again. But it was a big epic short. Uh, and it, it, it was grand. It had like Sorcerer's Apprentice style animation. It was like cinematic animation. It was actually really good. Uh, it had like dramatic moments. It had funny moments. Uh, you know, it, it had all the Disney characters in these giant castles and just shot beautifully. I mean, it was a very impressive short. Um, and and that came out, and it, w it was so long that they put an intermission between the short and the movie. Mickey Mouse actually comes out and says, Ha ha, go get some popcorn and uh, buy the crap back there. We'll be here in five minutes. And they had a little clock ticking down for five minutes. And I remember, e even as a kid, I'm like, we do you know how long we just sit in front of the TV? I mean, th this is not hard for us. <laughs> We're gonna sit through Return of the King in, you know, several years here. I mean, this, we don't need an intermission. Uh, especially kids. Kids can just look at a screen forever. So, so I grew up with stuff like that. I also grew up in a time where sometimes they would advertise the short more than they would advertise the movie. Uh, you know, like there's, there's a Roger Rabbit short called Roller Coaster Rabbit. Uh, they advertised that a lot, and I still remember that more than the movie it played with, which I think was called Far and Away. It was a Reese Witherspoon, the young Reese Witherspoon movie, and uh, I don't remember shit about that, but I remember Roller Coaster Rabbit. <laughs> uh, because to kids, they advertised that a lot. They'd advertise the short show, all these little bits, you know, playing before Far and Away. See, Roller Coaster Rabbit! So the idea of there being a lot of attention on a short if, especially from Disney, is not new. Um, but at the same time, Rescuers did not do very well. Uh, uh, Far and Away did not do very well. Uh, so the idea of maybe putting longer shorts before, maybe they didn't do that because people do get, you know, kind of upset just sitting in their seats for so long. They they come there to see a movie. They already got to see through commercials before the movie starts and previews and such. You know, they, they want the movie to start. Um... But my big question is that if you saw this without the knowledge that you're going to watch a movie beforehand, this came on TV, your kids wanted to watch it or something like that, would you hate it as much? Um, my initial thought is that if you hate the snowman, yeah, <laughs> you probably would. Um, which I get people who don't, who don't like Olaf. Every time I see him, I'm... I'm ready to hate him. I'm ready, like, I'm, I'm gonna, you're gonna be Jar Jar, you're gonna be Jar Jar, but then he says funny stuff, and he says it in a unique way, and I'm just like, man, you, you get lucky. <laughs> I'm always ready to hate that snowman, but never quite happens. Uh, but this special, despite it having some uh, dramatic moments, it's mostly very positive, it's very kid-friendly, it's characters jumping up and down singing about traditions and oh no Olaf has to escape from some wolves and he has to go get help and so on and so forth uh so I can see people kind of looking at that saying there's not much substance here uh but at the same time I would kind of say you know again listen to how many songs are in there something like five songs uh and they're pretty cleverly orchestrated. They're pretty cleverly put together. Uh, still gorgeous. Still just beautifully uh, uh, animated and, and, and photographed with the colors and uh, the schemes and, and the landscapes and so on and so forth. And it still has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, like I said, the dramatic moments, though, a, a little out of nowhere, they, they still work and they still connect to the characters. Nobody's out of character. And... I'd also say that uh, the message at the end is kind of where I said, all right, th th this was okay. I I'm okay with this. Uh, uh, without giving away too much, a lot of it centers around that, you know, it's about finding, you know, the a tradition for Elsa and Anna because they didn't have any traditions growing up because they were kept so apart. Uh, and the tradition they find at the end is kind of like people are the tradition. The way that people shape them and they shape people in some ways, literally in this case, but it's one of those things where the way we interact with people is the tradition. I know on one hand you can be like, that's a cliche, oh, family, that's, it's always family, but I like the idea that shaping people is a tradition, is a huge part of the holiday, like that's the one thing you can always rely on. 
You don't hear that. I, I think that's a cool point of view. I think that's a cool way of talking about that and showing that. And it, it was a nice little bit at the end. I didn't quite know where it was going. And the way they demonstrate it and show it at the end, I thought worked. I, I thought it was solid. I thought it was heartwarming. It, you know, it's not... It's not as heartwarming as Coco at the end of Coco. I think that's the other thing, too. People are so comparing the end of Coco to the end of this Frozen short, and it's like, well, no, you can't. That, that was just too good. They had an hour and a half <laughs> to develop that. This had 20 minutes. Um, yeah, but even then, 20 minutes, man. So, uh, so me, like a lot of people, was sort of leaning over, like, this was Coco, right? Or did we get the right movie? Um, so, it's one of those things where... I still see a lot of positive aspects about the short, and I don't know if it's... I'd say if you don't like it, you don't like it. You, you can't help that. I would say if you... I would say try separating it from the fact that this ran before not just a movie, but a really good movie. Um, and ask yourself, are there any good elements in it that would have you dismiss it as much as you already do. Um, because, like I said, I mean, consider the animation. Consider, even though they're bubbly, you know, how still clever the songs are, uh, consider the message, and consider the fact that it is Frozen. It's still huge, and they are doing a sequel, and they still obviously want to keep it relevant. Um, granted, you could be sick of it. You could be sick of Frozen. Everyone is kind of getting sick of it. And it is hard not to see the marketing aspect in this short. I remember I leaned over and I just said, they're all going to be in new clothes. <laughs> Nobody is going to wear the same outfit. Even Olaf gets a bow tie. <laughs> gets something different. And they have a, a candy cane at one point where he puts it in and he gets a sugar rush and his eyes turn a different color. And sure enough, there's that ornament <laughs> to hang up. So, yeah, all of them are now in different outfits to, you know, sell more toys and stuff like that. Uh, but as I always say, it's... All of it is there to kind of sell toys. Does it still tell a good story with good characters and a good message? I think it does. Uh, I don't think it's great. I don't think it's phenomenal. But for a short about, you know, Frozen and trying to, this time, very directly tie it into Christmas. Because sometimes it's seen as a Christmas movie, sometimes it's not. This one is straight up tying it into Christmas now, which, again, makes sense. And from a marketing standpoint, it makes too much sense. Uh, so... I think it works okay, um, but I can understand where people are coming from, not only with the length, not only that you're sick of Frozen, and not only that it seems very obvious in terms of marketing, um, and that it played, you know, during a movie that did not need it. Like I said, this should have been shown before Cars 2, <laughs> you know, or Cars 3, you know, something where it's like, look, we, we don't know if people are going to come see this movie because this it's probably not going to be a good Pixar movie. <laughs> Let's try and get, you know, more people into this. Coco, I mean, just visually it looked amazing. It, it was a, a, a very cool idea and uh, I had the emotion. I, I feel like even the makers of, like, Cars 2, Cars 3, and uh, Good Dinosaur, you know, like, they knew this was not like, okay, th this ain't going to be Toy Story. This ain't you know, gonna be Lion King or Frozen or anything like that. We we should put this short here. Um, but, uh, but they put it before Coco, and in my opinion, I think it's still fine. But I can see where people are coming from where they say they, they don't like it or they want to just get to the film. That's totally understandable. Uh, again, I'm putting out there the question, would you still think that if you just saw it on its own and it wasn't before a movie? Um, and you might still. Hey, and I get that too, but, but I still think it's worth asking that question, because I feel like that's where a lot of hate is coming from. They say, I want to see Coco, I want to see the damn movie that got so much praise. You know, I'm ready to cry, I brought my tears, let's go! So, I I'd say definitely ask that question about this short. Um, and if you still don't like it, fair enough, but I, I think some of you might say, eh, you know, maybe it wasn't that bad, I mean, maybe it actually had more effort put into it uh, than I'm giving it credit for. So, um... Yeah, or you could hate it and you're sick of Frozen. 
Either way, I, I totally get it. I think it's worth talking about, because uh, I love Disney, I love animation. I even still love Frozen, even though I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> I'm ready for Incredibles 2. <laughs> Let, let's, let's bring that back. Let's start bringing those characters back. So, yeah, that's about it. Just thought it'd be interesting to start a conversation there, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or did you forget it as soon as you saw it? Didn't even make an impact. Uh, that's about it, and I shall talk to you later. Take care.